Okay, you all did this. I made a couple jokes about making a Planet Sheen video and everyone wanted me to actually make it. Except for this person. Planet Sheen has been this weird little stain on the legacy of Jimmy Neutron, one of my personal favorite shows growing up, and something we have and still are covering in depth here on the channel. Now, I wanted to go into my rewatch of this show completely unfazed by preconceived feelings from when I originally saw this show when it came out, as well as the predominantly negative discourse online. And regardless of what lies ahead, at least it's only 26 episodes? But that being said, I still needed some moral support getting through this undertaking. So I had to call in the big orcs. Yep, you know what I'm about to say. How many YouTubers is it gonna take to finally get through to you that a daily dose of Demon Lord slaying keeps the big scary dragons away? Thanks to today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends, you can finally fulfill that quota. Raid Shadow Legends has over 600 unique champions to play as, a ton of varied bosses to take down, and it also has me playing the game. I know that last point really got your attention, huh? And now? The first two did, but not the third? Oh, okay, well that's fair. I mean, just look at this boss though! Sir Galarith, Guardian of the Arcane Keep. Not only does this dude look as fresh as the wounds I'll be inflicting upon him, he's actually a pretty nice guy. He loves to read, go for long walks on the beach, and taste the cold steel of my blades. Seems like a cakewalk to beat him and be worthy of the potions he guards, but don't be fooled. He puts up a strong front, so come prepared and go at him with your AoE buffs on your team, and take out his minion defenses who will strip you of those abilities quick. Yeah, I'm like a verbal strategy guide. You're you're welcome, Dan from South Dakota. Hey, thanks, man. It's something that I can play in between working on my scripts and editing work, whether it be on my PC or phone. This month, Raid has just released a humongous new Doom Tower update, featuring two new bosses, Astronix the Dark Fae and Bamal the Dreadhorn. New enemy balance on tower floors, new secret rooms to discover, and most importantly, new artifact sets to win. And if you want an even bigger head start on that, all you have to do is hit the link in the description or scan the QR code right on the screen and you'll receive the epic hero, Chinoru, who is a beast in the Doom Tower. You'll also get 200,000 silver, one XP boost, one energy refill, and one ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in game. So what are you waiting for? Download Raid Shadow Legends right now. Spanning but a single season, as so many spin-offs based around a single side character often do, Planet Sheen, which aired its first 11 episodes on Nickelodeon between October 2010 and August 2011, and then its final 15 episodes on Nicktoons between May 2012 and February 2013, was a spin-off series focused around Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius's side character, Sheen Estevez. Which in most cases, a side character like Sheen, who plays a specific role as the not so smart side character like a, oh, I don't know, Patrick Star or something, runs the risk of flanderizing them and spotlighting the worst aspects of that character. And I'm sure if that happens here with Planet Sheen, Nickelodeon would never, ever do that to any other characters I just, I don't know, mentioned previously in any shape or form, would they? Sarcasm aside, and interestingly enough, Planet Sheen is technically a spin-off of a spin-off, with the show being a spin-off of the Jimmy Neutron TV show, which itself is a spin-off continuation of the Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius movie. Planet Sheen was created through the combined efforts of Jimmy Neutron co-creators John A. Davis, also known for his work on the movie Santa vs. Snowman 3D. Wait. This played in IMAX? Why? And Steve Odekirk, who also worked on Santa vs. Snowman 3D. And through the efforts of DNA Productions owner Keith Alcorn, Keith's involvement with the project stemmed from DNA Productions being the company that originally produced both the Jimmy Neutron TV series and accompanying Jimmy Neutron movie. You might remember their iconic end logo with the three-eyed monkey on the beach waving at the camera saying, Hi, I'm Paul! Planet Sheen was a slightly serialized but predominantly episodic style show that followed around Sheen on the distant planet Xenu after he, in true Sheen style, gets stranded there by accidentally jacking and destroying one of Jimmy Neutron's rockets, despite several very explicit notes from Jimmy advising Sheen not to jump in the rocket and press the launch button. Once on Xenu, Sheen first does two things. He one, destroys an evil alien sorcerer's house by crashing into it, thus making an enemy for life, and two, becomes a royal advisor after somehow impressing the Emperor on the planet. From there, hijinks naturally ensue 
lose and my brain cell rate vastly drops. Backing up Sheen throughout this intergalactic hijinks is a cast of strange new characters who call Xenu home, including Mr. Nesmith, a space exploration chimpanzee that's been trapped on Xenu since the 70s and serves as this sort of narrative replacement for Jimmy as the only true intelligent life form found. There's Doppy, a Carl Weezer look-alike alien that also befriends Sheen and has the voice of Rob Paulson. Bless that man. But it's like I always say, if you got the character design saved on your hard drive, why not reuse it? Yeah, my design is changing soon, anyway. The Emperor, the ruler of Xenu, who is constantly trying to set up Sheen with his daughter, Princess Alm, and Asifa, voiced by Soleil Moonfry, most famous for playing Punky Brewster, is an alien warrior who serves as Sheen's love interest throughout the series. Because just forget Libby, I guess? Also featured heavily in the show, but in an antagonist position, was Dorcas, the aforementioned evil alien sorcerer hungry for revenge against Sheen for destroying his house and for taking his royal advisor position. And Pinter, Dorcas's minion. Their role in the show is predominantly as the root of trouble that is constantly trying to either get Sheen in trouble or to take him out completely. I'll just say it here, Pinter is the best character in the show, and he's also freaking adorable. When Planet Sheen was initially pitched, it was going to be a lot more serious than the eventual wacky, random styling it ended up with would imply. In the original concept, the Emperor of Xenu was going to be evil, and Sheen was going to work as a double agent against him. What made the studio move away from this interpretation is unknown. Probably something to do with blah blah blah, random equals funny, yada yada yada, fast paced nonsense to keep attention. <sighs> you get it. The landscape at this point in the early 2010s split a very specific divide in cartoons either being like this or ended up being a part of a more deeply written and well-told story as those shows would start their own renaissance of sorts. Planet Sheen does not fall into that category in the slightest. Despite its eventual lukewarm reputation, when the pilot of Planet Sheen originally aired, many fans were excited for it. The premise of a beloved comic relief character and documented idiot blasting off to some unknown planet to be stranded there until he finds a way home is a great setup for a series on paper. Unfortunately, implementing it properly is a whole other territory. Partway through its airing, as I said earlier, the show didn't last long on Nickelodeon. It was tossed over to their Nicktoons channel. Why? One can only assume as an attempt by Nickelodeon to hide the shame of what they had done, rejecting their own creation like Frankenstein with his monster. Of course, Planet Sheen didn't go on to track down Nickelodeon in the Arctic to... You know what? This analogy isn't very good much like this show. Throughout its 26 episode run, the show failed to deliver what fans were looking for and the show was eventually canceled due to low ratings and high production costs. I will say the overall quality of the animation does look fine. It's just Jimmy Neutron in HD with better lighting and polish. Okay, maybe not for the landscapes, but the character models, specifically Sheen's, looked great. As far as complimenting much else about the show, the list doesn't really go on. From the constant back and forth between Shane and Nesmith where Nesmith would just explain rational thinking, Sheen would always be wrong and then implement whatever he wanted to do regardless. This unrestricted ridiculousness proves to not only be unbearable at times, but shows that having a lack of Jimmy here to, more times than not, handle Sheen's nonsense is integral to Sheen's comedic relief character as a whole. Most other characters like the Emperor and Doppy only further these problems. Asifa seems to be the only one that can truly get through to Sheen on occasion, and the butt of many jokes jokes in the series are butts, toilet jokes, and of course slapstick in the form of Dorcas getting constantly hurt. It boils down to a formulaic show, with plots not much deeper than Sheen needing to use the restroom, or more Dorcas getting hurt over trying to hurt Sheen. I honestly, right after watching it, can't think of any notable moments that stand out as it all just blends together. Having Sheen as the comedic relief in Jimmy Neutron proper served a point in aiding Jimmy as well as to emphasize how smart Jimmy is. Having Jimmy with no comedic relief because becomes too dry, but having comedic relief with no cooldown becomes exhausting. I never like to blindly hate on a show, I give things a fair chance, but in doing so here, I found no difference than how I felt a decade ago when I first saw this show when it was new. I may be even a bit more jaded on it now after re-watching Jimmy Neutron recently and seeing how great that show constantly was, and how not constantly great Planet Sheen was. It feels like an obvious cash grab at fans of Jimmy Neutron, and at the same time almost like a 
straight to DVD ripoff you find at Walmart. Ah yes, the 2013 classic, Atlantic Rim. Many fans since Planet Sheen ended have speculated that the network didn't have much faith in the series from the jump, going so far as to cite the fact that Nickelodeon never gave the pilot episode an official name, instead just calling it Pilot, as a showcase of that lack of confidence in its success. And the show ends with an episode where Sheen murders a whole lot of alien grasshoppers who give out wedgies. Originally, a movie was planned to wrap up the series by having Jimmy and the gang travel to Xenu to rescue Sheen and bring him home. But due to the series' low ratings, this movie was shelved before it even saw the light of day, leaving Sheen's fate indeterminate and vague. Kind of. In the Jimmy Neutron episode, The Tomorrow Boys, where Jimmy makes the time portal so that the gang can visit the future, it is implied that Sheen did make it back to Earth, since according to that episode, in the future, Sheen is an extremely famous male model. Or if you watch further in the episode, a dumpster diver. Of course, this can just be a branching timeline incident, something something Loki, or someone failing to remember this particular Jimmy Neutron episode existed when pitching Planet Sheen. Or maybe Maybe it's just not canon at all, and none of this makes sense. Fate of Sheen out on planet Xenu remains unanswered today. Will that brave little traveler ever get home? I sure hope not. I wanted the best for this show. I love Jimmy Neutron and what that show meant to me growing up and still does to this day. But Planet Sheen, any angle you look at it, just isn't good. From its conception, to the confidence behind the project, to the writing in general. The show didn't know what it wanted to do with Sheen. They had an interesting idea to send Sheen to space on accident, and it could have been executed well if it was like a Jimmy Neutron TV movie. Similar to the original ending concept, where Jimmy and Carl would probably have to go and find and rescue Sheen from whatever he was getting into on that planet. But it just being Sheen alone on a planet for 26 episodes, doesn't and clearly didn't work. It seems overall like a mistake to make Sheen a leading role character on his own with characters too similar to him. And there probably was some great ideas here, but maybe this ship should have never launched. Next time, heed Jimmy's warning notes. Let me know what you think about Planet Sheen in the comments below. If you like it, that's fantastic, and I'm happy you do find enjoyment in that show, of course. For me, I just did not. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Make sure to hit like and subscribe for more content like this. I'll be back soon with another video, but until then, later.